Good evening, and thank you for coming tonight. The invocation for tonight will be done by Ellen Conant. Dear God, we thank you for the journey that has brought us to this point in our lives. We thank you for your strength when hope seemed lost, for your presence when we felt alone, your wisdom when we felt we were lacking, your endurance, which has brought us through these past two years together. And we thank you for your promise that through you, all things are possible. As we step out of this university and into the lives of our patients, be with us as we encounter your miracles every day. Stand beside us as we experience our first patient recover. Stand before us when we face our first new obstacle. Rejoice with us as we see our first new life brought into the world. And hold us as we see our first slip away. And through every obstacle, simply remind us that we are never alone. Allow us to grow in wisdom, to overcome obstacles, and to admit our mistakes and learn from them. Acknowledging that a mistake is only admitting that we know more now than we did when the mistake occurred. Help us to remember that our patient is the reason we are employed, and no amount of money could equal to saving lives, while at the same time changing them, as well as our own. Remind us to always stand up for our patients, to do what is right even when we fail to do things right, and to never settle for second best. Help us to strive to be the kind of nurses that the ladies to my left have set the example of for us. To be kind-hearted, wise, encouraging, and most importantly, loving. And on our long days, when nothing seems to go our way, remind us that it's okay to cry, as long as we remind ourselves to pick us back up. We have finished this long race, we have the knowledge and skills, and we will succeed in life. Help us to remember each day that what lies ahead of us and what lies behind pales in comparison to what lies inside. Remind us to keep you first in every endeavor and to always, always wash our hands. In your name we pray, amen. Welcome distinguished guests, faculty, family, and friends, and senior nursing graduates to the fall 2013 pinning, pinning ceremony. I am happy that all of you could be here with us on this very special occasion. Each pinning ceremony has its own special meaning for the students, their families, and the faculty. We are celebrating both the successful completion of one journey and the beginning of a new professional journey for these graduates. The 24 pre-licensure graduates will now serve our community and promote the profession of nursing with competence, skill, integrity, knowledge, and caring. Our eight RN to BSN learners have responded to the Institute of Medicine's call for 80% of the workforce to be BSN educated by 2020. They are leaders in our field. All 31 seniors are also ready now for graduate school, some of which will return to us in our new Francis Marion University MSN program to become family nurse practitioners or nurse educators. As of tonight, as an independent program of nursing study, Francis Marion University has graduated over 500 baccalaureate nursing students to serve the PD region over the past seven years. And tonight, we are very, very proud to add another 31 to that number and congratulate them in this traditional pinning ceremony. The tradition of the nursing pin originated in the Florence Nightingale School of Nursing at St. Thomas Hospital in London. Florence Nightingale was awarded the Red Cross of St. George for her selfless service to the soldiers in the Crimean War and chose to present a medal to her most outstanding graduates. It has subsequently become a tradition to present all graduates from nursing programs a pin upon completion of the program. The Francis Marion University Department of Nursing pin signifies our core values, which are competence, commitment, and caring. We know that the graduates will wear these pins well and represent the profession, the Department of Nursing, and the university with integrity, honor, and pride. It is my pleasure now to introduce our special guests for this occasion. Dr. Fred Carter, President of Francis Marion University. Thank you, Ruth. Uh, thank you, friends, for coming out this evening. This is a, a very, very unique ceremony in the, uh, in the university's calendar, one that we're very, very proud to recognize every year. 
First of all, let me applaud the, uh, the nursing faculty for the timing of this. This afternoon was the children's party at the president's house. There were about 350 children there, and it ended about 15 minutes ago, and the cleanup just began. So I have about two hours worth of remarks this evening that, <laughs> just kidding. Let me take a second, first of all, and recognize my friend sitting on the front row down here, Bradley Calcutt. Bradley's executive director of the Bruce and Lee Foundation. <laughs> Many of you recognize the term Bruce and Lee Foundation for all the support they provide the university in the creation of this nursing program and the funding of our nursing building over there and about $250,000 worth of nursing scholarships they provide us every year. For about $7.5 seven, uh, 7 million they're providing us for the construction of our new uh, health sciences building in downtown Florence. This foundation's been a terrific godsend to this community, but it's been a unique blessing to this institution. Bradley, we're deeply appreciative of everything you do. Thank you. You know, I was going to talk this evening about the origins of the, um, of the pinning ceremony. You know, and by the way, my date takes it back to the middle of the 12th century, and I don't get to the Florence Nightingale stuff until two paragraphs later. <laughs> but what I really want to talk to you about this evening is how proud I am of this class and how proud I am of this nursing program. You know, as Ruth told you a couple of minutes ago, we started this program seven years ago. We actually started eight years ago, first graduation seven years ago. We produced 500 nurses. But that really doesn't do justice to what this program has been able to do. Based on the strength of this program, the strength of this faculty, and the terrific competence and credibility of the nurses that we produced in this program, Inside eight years, we've gone out and produced a nurse practitioner program at this university. Next year, we will bring third and fourth year medical students from the University of South Carolina School of Medicine to study with our nurse practitioners. In 2016, we'll begin our first class of physician assistants at this university. And in 2017, we'll begin our master's program in speech pathology at this university. All of that stems from the quality of this nursing program. No, all of that stems from the quality of the nursing graduates we produce in this program. So I'm here tonight to do two things. The first thing I want to do is to compliment you and congratulate you on completing a rigorous and difficult curriculum. You've done it and you've done it in stellar fashion and I want to compliment you on your joining the ranks of the nurses that serve this community, this country, and the world. You have an enormous job in front of you and you'll do it extraordinarily well. The second thing I want to do is thank you. Thank you for the foundation you've laid for this university to grow and develop and be one of the most substantial health producing programs in the entire southeast. We couldn't have done it without you. Thank you very much and good luck. Thank you, Dr. Carter. Other distinguished guests I would like to introduce tonight is Dr. Richard Chapman, Provost, and Dr. Peter King, Associate Provost. Next, I would like to, to invite Dr. Rhonda Brogdon. She is the coordinator of the RN to BSN track here at Francis Marion University, and she will introduce our keynote speaker, Dr. Gay Douglas. It is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Gay M. Douglas, an assistant professor of nursing at Francis Marion University. Dr. Douglas began her healthcare career at Florence Darlington Technical College by obtaining two associate degrees, one in radiologic technology in 1984 and in nursing in 1986. She then obtained her BSN from MUSC satellite program right here at FMU in 1992. 
She completed her Master of Education degree from USC in 1996 and a Master of Nursing as a family nurse practitioner in 2004. In May of 2013, she completed her Doctorate of Nursing Practice from MUSC. Her nursing experience includes medical surgical and emergency room nursing, along with home health and nursing and school nursing, where she developed and managed a school-based health center after becoming a nurse practitioner. As a family nurse practitioner, she focused on pediatric and adolescent primary care and has a special interest in pediatric and adolescent developmental care and behavioral health. With the collaboration of MUSC, she developed a telemedicine program whereby students were able to receive trauma counseling, follow-up care from developmental pediatrics, and other specialty pediatric services, allowing minimal absence from class. Her other interests include rural health disparities and interdisciplinary collaborative practice. She is presently a committee member of Coastal Plain Health Network and Palmetto Care Connections, an initiative to expand telemedicine services in South Carolina. I present to you the guest speaker, Dr. Gay M. Douglas. Thank you very much. I, I want to thank you students for allowing me to speak at your panning. This is quite an honor and as I was thinking about speaking to you, it's a unique opportunity because as I begin my address, I'm speaking to you as a faculty member and by the end I'm speaking to you as a professional, from one professional to another. So we're going um, to we're going to talk about that a little bit. As your professor, I want to remind you of the reasons you became a nurse. Initially, it was probably because you wanted to help people. That's what we hear a lot, and I felt the same way. You, you may have chosen nursing because of job security, salary, or some other benefits. You may have chosen nursing because you like working weekends, nights, and holidays. <laughs> I hope you do. As you progress through your training, you discovered more concrete motives. And those motives we're going to talk about a little bit, they resemble the core values that we've spoken to you about. So now as a professional, from one professional to another, I want to urge you to continue to develop your altruistic mannerisms, that, that concern for the welfare and well-being of others at no obvious reward to you just because somebody else will benefit from your actions. I want you to strengthen your autonomy. Do they sound familiar? Your right to self-determination and self-direction. You will face many challenges as a nurse and there will be obstacles that get in your way. Don't look at these as disadvantages for this is how you strengthen your autonomy. Never waver in your belief in the inherent worth and uniqueness of individuals, families, and communities. Embrace human dignity so that you'll be able to consistently show unconditional respect for others, regardless of their circumstances. This will also assist you in maintaining the practice of social justice so that you can support your patients' freedom to make their own decisions while still upholding their dignity and never ever waver in your integrity. Firmly follow the code of ethics and accepted standards of practice for nursing that you've studied over the past few years. Now I'm certain that more than one of you has said something like, I am so glad this is over. I am so glad to be through with school, thank goodness. Well, I have some news for you. While you may be graduating, you're far from being done. What you've been through for the, past, for the past four years is your preparation. The real education comes for you when you're the nurse taking care of the patient, when you are the one given nine o'clock medicines and there's nobody beside you double checking, you're unsupervised, and when you have an admission, a discharge, a patient going to surgery and a patient coming back all at one time. 
that is your education. And you never graduate from that institute. On that note, I want to leave you with one final notion. As an instructor, I asked you to decide on certain interventions. I asked you to choose patient outcomes, to decide on goals for your patients. But in the end, I always ask you, why? Why did you choose those? Where's the science behind your decision? Where's your proof? As one professional to another, I want you to be the one asking the questions. I want you, more than anything else, to cultivate your spirit of inquiry. Question everything. What does that mean, to question everything? It means discuss, consider, express some doubt, dispute, analyze, or examine. So why do I want you to do that? Things have changed so much since I became a nurse just a few years ago. I won't bore you with war stories. I'm sure you've heard plenty. So let's just talk about a few brief changes that I've seen since I've become a nurse. Now this is a little unique for a pinning address. I understand that. But I want to add in a little audience participation. Please raise your hand if you are a nurse, practicing or retired. Great. Thank you. Please raise your hand <laughs> if you have ever worn one of these as a student or as a professional. Do y'all know what these are? <laughs> Thank you. The white cap, what happened to it? The reality of the times was that nurses did not agree with the usefulness, value, or practicality of wearing the white cap. Dresses had given way to pants and eventually to scrubs, and the cap was looking a little bit like a relic. Nurses were also taking on more roles that didn't require traditional uniforms. So somebody asked, why? Why are we still wearing caps? Where's the science? The white dress, just like the cap, found its way out. And if you've never had the experience of trying to get betadine out of white cotton cloth, you missed it. <laughs> Early admissions. If you were a nurse and you worked at a time when patients were brought in the day before surgery so that you could get their labs done and their x-rays done, and make sure they had a good night's rest for surgery between the 10 o'clock medicines, the midnight and 4 a.m. vital signs, and whatever you chose to do to them. Raise your hand if you were nursing when you brought the patients in before surgery. Charlene, where are you? I know, we did that together. Somebody asked why. Why are they coming in early? Where's the science behind that? What was the purpose? Was it possible they could come in a week early and have lab work done and x-rays done and then come in the day of surgery, thus the birth of day hospital? Patients often stayed for days after surgery, days and days, without receiving any significant nursing care. Somebody asked, why? Why are they staying so long? Where's the science behind that? So patients are now discharged as soon as they're able to take care of themselves. So this is the, uh, the last one. Raise your hand if you're a nurse and you ever gave Procardia sublingually to a patient. Dr. Hopla, oh yeah. <laughs> Dr. Hopla and I worked in the ER years ago in the early 90s. And we did a great job at reducing blood pressure because we gave that blood pressure medicine or that heart medicine under the tongue, brought that blood pressure right down. We really did our job. Then somebody asked, 
Why does there seem to be an increase in the number of strokes, heart attacks, and deaths in patients who received Procardia? Come to find out, not only is there no evidence to support such use of this medication, there is also data that suggests that that sublingual nifedipine or Procardia should never be used for this purpose and the practice was stopped in 1995. I don't know who asked those questions, probably was a nurse. So why do I want you to ask why? Because there are many challenges in the field of healthcare and you are our future, our hope for continued progress. We've worked so hard to advance the field of nursing. We've not only made it acceptable for nurses to question the norm, but now it's actually a part of your professional responsibility. Why ask why? You are our hope for improved outcomes for patients, for a disruption in the spiraling of health disparities in certain populations. You are our hope. Congratulations, and may God bless each and every one of you as you continue your education. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Douglas, for your inspiring words. The next portion of our program is presentation of student awards for excellence, and there are two of them. The first award goes to the pre-licensure student who has the highest GPA and has been academically accomplished throughout our program. The student with the highest GPA is Ellen Conant. The second award is the Sylvia Lufkin Award for Caring, and this, year, and this semester it goes to Mr. Tyler King. We will now move on to the pinning of our students. The students' names will be called by Dr. Karen Thompson. The RN to BSN graduates will be pinned by, the, by their track coordinator, Dr. Rhonda Brogdon. Haley Elizabeth Bethay. Kayla Nicole Miles Campbell. <laughs> Margaret Ellen Conant. Harry Lee Cox. <laughs> Melissa A. Finkley. Kelly LaVon Ganey. <laughs> J. 
James Robert Harrell. Candace Benton Hill. Casey Elizabeth Hooks. <laughs> Jessica Elizabeth Horn. Elizabeth Horn Hovis. <laughs> Nicole Rose Hutchinson. Monica Renee Isaac. <laughs> Tyler Joseph King. Jessica Hope Lloyd. <laughs> Haley Morgan Lowry. Catherine Justine McLeod. <clears throat> Ashley Cherie Morrison. Breezy Rochelle Parker. <laughs> Jalisa Charnel Porche. Morgan Chantel Rogers. <laughs> Gary Todd Sanders.
Lindsay Page Skipper. Morgan Michelle Tyler. Now for our Oren to be us in. Stepney Fitzgerald. Blackwell. Oh. Oops. God. <laughs> I need another one. <laughs> Miranda Yvette Christie. Melinda Diane Daniels. <laughs> Brantley Yarbrough Curvin. Cheryl A. Jenkins. <laughs> Speedway Sabundi. Tasha Chanel Thompson. <laughs> Ursula Evans Townsend. Thank you. At this time, please give all our graduates a round of applause. We would like to invite all the nurses in the audience to remain standing <laughs> and join us in reciting the Nightingale Pledge. Okay. 
Okay. As I enter the nursing profession, I pledge to use all the knowledge, skills, and understanding that I possess when providing professional nursing care, deliver nursing care non-judgmentally to all those who require it to the best of my ability, refrain from any action which might be harmful to the quality, life, or health of those I care for, treat each person with respect, hold a professional confidence all the personal information entrusted to me. Keep my professional knowledge and skills at the highest level and give my support and cooperation to all the members of the healthcare team. Contribute to the advancement of the nursing profession and the team. This special standards required for my profession. Thank you. At this time, we will conclude with the benediction, but we would like to invite everybody back to the Lee Nursing build Building for a reception and light, light refreshments. The benediction will be done by Kayla Campbell. The blessing of the hands. As we begin our careers as bachelor's prepared nurses, let us take a few moments to ask a special blessing on our hands. Hands that will provide care, offer comfort, and bestow compassion to our patients and their families. No matter what type of nursing we choose, we have all accepted a call to bless others with our hands in and through the work we do. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that your presence be in all that you would have us do and grant us the ability to accept that where you place us is where we belong. Renew, us, renew in us the awareness of your sustaining love that touches us every day. Open the eyes of our hearts to see that you touch the world through the hands of people. As you touch us, may we in turn touch others to give hope, grace, and compassion. And now, Lord, blessed be the hands that will touch life, blessed be the hands that will comfort pain, blessed be the hands that will perform treatments and deliver medications, blessed be the hands that will anoint the sick and offer blessings of hope, blessed be our hands as you allow us to hold the wonders of the future, blessed be our hands as they are the work of your hands. We ask this in your name and we seek the leadership of your unseen hand, amen. Amen.